Let's talk a little bit now about the perioscope technique. This is part of the two-handed technique, putting the scope in your left hand and just moving the mirror to the side. When you put the scope down, the mirror is just flipped around and you're ready to use the mirror. Initially, I was ta taught to place the endoscope in my right hand and because I had the ultrasonic in my right hand, I just moved the ultrasonic to the side. But I no longer do that. I rarely, rarely put the endoscope in my right hand. So I'll put other things in my right hand. And it's sometimes we have um, four instruments in both hands at the same time. These are the explorers. I call these the Fave Four. Um, these explorers are made in a left and a right configuration and we color code the left yellow and the right red and then what we also do is we bend the right to the right and call it a right right or a red red and the the yellow one we bend it or the left we bend to the left and we label that yellow yellow or left left um, if you look at these explorers, the shield is at the end and it allows you on this one to look to the right. And obviously the left one looks to the left. The left bent to the left looks back and the right bent to the right also looks back. And what we like to do is bend them just a little bit at an angle here. You can see this one's straight but this one's bent a little bit at an angle so it looks even more back toward the front of the mouth. The right, the left and the right are used typically for the sides of teeth and anterior teeth and um, the mesials of posterior teeth. The right right and the left left are used to look into the distals of posterior sextants and then also to the lingual or palatal aspects of the anterior teeth. Here are some pictures of the um, explorers and this is say a right viewing explorer viewing the distal lingual and we put the ultrasonic in and we start cleaning the ultrasonic in and start cleaning while we're looking at the screen we're moving around and in toward the mesial. This is also demonstrated on another video on um, instrument positioning. Here's the use of the right explorer in the anterior segment where we're moving around. You position the explorer while looking in the mouth, position your um, instrument and then start cleaning looking at the screen and you can put the instrument sometimes you're putting it here sometimes you're cross instrumenting from the other side um, sometimes you're in front of the camera sometimes you're in back of the camera sometimes you're right in the middle of the camera here's the use of the right explorer bent to the right for the viewing of the distal lingual the left explorer bent to the left using an instrument with a curved micro ultrasonic and we use these curved ones to help us get back into spots that the straight one is just not bent enough to get into here's the scope and the instrument at the base of the pocket sometimes the scope is coronal to the to the very tip of the instrument a lot of times on the lower or um, especially on the lower but in the posterior we do cross instrumentation where um, the instrument comes from one side and the endoscope comes from the other side and here's a straight here's a curved instrument sometimes you just can't get some of these areas clean because this doesn't angle back toward the front of the mouth enough A lot of times when you turn the insert to to reposition 
it based upon where you are in the mouth, you may hold the handle and rotate the insert. But what I found is easier is to hold the insert and rotate the handle. And I normally hold on to the handle. I recommend holding on to the handle and not holding on to the insert. The water flow, adequate water flow is, is at least 20 cc's per minute. The sheath that we have now is two parallel tubes and um, it used to be a tube within a tube but that really restricts um, the ability of the water to flow. So two separate tubes, a small chamber here that goes to the end um, and that detail is shown in another video on the uh, fiber and sheath detail. At 35 PSI, we get about 20 cc's per minute, and we're running about 60 PSI, so we get about 30 cc's a minute. And the way we do that is we um, have a separate water bottle system. It's just like in any dental operatory, they have water bottles now. They're air pressure driven. We use a two liter bottle, and we hook it directly to the sheath. We don't connect it to the back of the master control unit and have it come out of the top. It just comes directly from here and this particular unit has its own pedal. The technique in action, here's Chris Wood, one of our hygienists. She's looking at the screen and endoscopically cleaning. We have a perio charting here. You can see she's using the two-handed technique with three instruments in both of the hands and she's using both of her feet to operate the ultrasonic and turn the water on the endoscope. Actually now we have a separate pedal. We don't use the dental view pedal anymore except to change the illumination and that makes the light brighter or darker. I asked Chris to outline some of the things that she does and she checks her functions prior to seating the patient, the water flow, the light source, and the sheath. She really emphasizes having patience because you have to coordinate your hands, your feet, the pedals, and the instruments. Simplify things. Start and finish with one explorer in each segment before starting to use another explorer. Keep your eyes on the screen. Get the micro ultrasonic tip and explorer adjusted and then use the screen to govern your movements. We use power at medium plus with micro ultrasonics. Pressure. Use lateral pressure for more power. And this is explained in some of the segments on micro ultrasonics. Movement. Use smaller movements over deposits. And then we always call our patients afterwards, follow up the next day. It definitely exceeds patients' expectations, and it's definitely appreciated. I feel like our patients heal better when we call them. Endoscopic treatment options for periodontal disease. Secondary use, and this is how most people start out using the endoscope. You do your tactile debridement, you reevaluate, and then you do localized endoscopic debridements of non-responding sites. Primary use. This is what we typically do in our office. We do endoscopic debridement on new and existing patients.